Hi, I'm Ella and I'm the Plants Meow and today I'm going to be talking to you about Anthurium stem propagation and specifically if they can be propagated in water. So I do have an example here with me to show you guys and this was basically me being really desperate by putting this Anthurium in water. So everything I've read online says that they're not aquatic plants. I've seen some people put common Anthuriums into water and they've been fine, but it's hard to find any information on any other groups and how the velvety ones, if at all, could be sustained in a water medium. So really quickly, if you look here, you can tell that there are definitely roots and everything looks pretty healthy. So that's pretty awesome. So as you can tell, there's also right here a new leaf forming. So I'm pretty satisfied with how, the came, how this particular one came out. So this is a plant, if you watch my Cuflora unboxing, it was my free plant that I received. That order just did not do well, and I had tried rooting one a different way, it didn't survive. So desperately I decided to put this one in water, knowing full well that Anthuriums really, like, they're not recommended to be water propagated. You should never leave your Anthurium in standing water, is what I've always heard. So, and honestly, it's taken forever to get to this place. It's been many months. The something I don't like about this, if you notice, all the roots are pointed up, which is pretty annoying. It's, <laughs> it's kind of spiderly, so I'm gonna have to kind of edge them down when I go to pot them. So that's something I don't like about growing them in this particular medium. But other than that, this plant basically just came back from the dead. <laughs> so I'm pretty impressed with this propagation. Would I do it again? I wouldn't. There is a different method that I do use now that I prefer much more than any others. And I'll talk about that in a different video. So I'm going to have three videos coming out. This one. The next one's gonna be moss, and then the third one is gonna be my favorite technique to use for anthuriums. And it's been pretty foolproof, so I'm pretty excited to show you guys that one if you don't already know about it. But yeah, so this leaf, honestly, if it was put in moss or soil, probably would have fallen off by now. I think the water helps it kind of hang on, but I'm definitely gonna be removing it today and potting it up. So normally I don't like to pot plants that are growing new leaves right away in case it stunts them. But in this situation where it's kind of in water, I kind of just want to get it out of water at this point. It just kind of freaks me out keeping it there any longer. I mean, it's definitely been a success. I'm really, really surprised genuinely at how successful this has been. But honestly, it's definitely scary to try to do this when all you've ever heard is they're not aquatic, <laughs> don't put them in water. So a lot of the times in nature, if they are in water a lot, it's because one, they're on rocks. So they're constantly having water splash onto them, but it runs right off. They're not sitting in water. Also in the rainforest, they're pathetic for the most part, it runs right off of them. So just sitting in standing water <laughs> was really risky. For all my other plants, this is my favorite propagation method. Water is my favorite just because it's easy. You can just pour a glass and stick a plant in it. I really haven't had much trouble with it. Um, for the most part, it's been successful. So I think it's easy and the good thing is you're not using other materials so there's not a lot of waste going on. So I do prefer that. I've also never had an issue with what they call water roots, which is when your plant is rooting in water and the roots really need to adapt to that soil because they're so fine and delicate. I have some plants that have the thickest roots in the world right now propagating in the water. And I don't see it being an issue at all when I transfer them. In fact, I have a few propagations and I think I have three monsteras that I propagated in water that I transferred to soil and I've had no issues with and it's been like five months. <laughs> I think that is just something that's thrown around, but 
there's nothing wrong with water propagation, so I'm totally fine with using it. Not for Ethereum still. Like I said, this was a risk. It was successful, but I probably wouldn't do it again just because of the other method that I did learn about later. But I'm honestly really surprised at how this came out. So I'm curious to see if you guys have ever tried propagating Ethereums in water, what your experience has been with that, if it's been a success or a failure. I never hear anyone talk about propagating Ethereums in water, so it was definitely really scary to attempt to do it. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and pot this one up really quickly, just because I've been really keeping it in this glass for way too long. It's been months. <laughs> and I really feel like it could have been further along in its root growth if it wasn't soil. But for the most part, I think it's done fantastically in water. It shows no signs of rot, and I haven't really been changing out the water like I was intending to. I've just kind of been refilling it, which I felt was really dangerous also to do with an anthurium, so I'm really shocked about that. So in all, this whole experience has been genuinely surprising. But I was pretty desperate with this Anthurium. It was one of my favorites in the unboxing. And I, even though I knew it was a huge risk, I've always had so much success with water propagating that I thought, you know what? I failed with every other method I've attempted with the other plants. So I wanted to try something different. Yeah, and it's like, it's not squishy at all. It's just genuinely surprising. See, this is the part that I'm not feeling about. And water propagations in general, the roots like to grow up, which I don't like it at all. So I'm gonna try to pot it a little bit down without like bothering this new leaf too much, which is difficult because there's so much in my soil medium that I feel like could just decapitate it. <laughs> Fertilizing. So I pretty much always fertilize my anthuriums with my Osmocote. <laughs> so it actually really helps them to grow new leaves and I've had a lot of success with it. I haven't had any burn, but I think cause I use like, I don't use too much. And while Osmocote does have a no burn pledge, it only applies if you use it as directed. And I always use less than directed. So I'm not going to add any more soil to that. Oh gosh. I was wondering why I buried it so deep for a second and then I forgot that it has roots just everywhere. I was actually planning on taking this leaf off, <laughs> but that did not happen. Look how cute this baby leaf is. So I'm curious, what do you all think about this particular method of propagating your anthuriums? Do you agree that it's super risky or do you think that it's something that I shouldn't even worry about? There isn't a ton of information out there except for forums when it comes to propagating anthuriums in water. There's some articles, but like I said, they're mostly related to common anthuriums, which Honestly, they've been hybridized so many times, they're basically lab plants. <laughs> so you could probably do a lot of things with a common anthurium that you couldn't do with others just straight out. In other groups of anthuriums, particularly like the velvet group, I felt that was particularly risky. But for the most part, I'm happy with this turn how this turned out. So I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and please comment any feedback down below. And if you wanna see more content, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.